It's good to have you join us this time on Nationwide. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. Our starting point today is the legislature. The senators we emphasized that the money that will be realized from the amendment of the Deep Offshore and Inland Basin Production Sharing Contract Act will significantly fund the 2020 budget deficit at the resumed resumption of budget consideration Senators were particularly concerned about sources of funding the budget. They also observed that allocations to defense and education sectors need to be improved. Senators expect a rejuvenation of development banks so as to enable the financial institutions assist in the level of GDP growth. The legislators again commended President Muhammadu Buhari for a timely presentation of the budget but harped on the need for improved financial releases and implementation. Meanwhile, the need to be more innovative in revenue generation was central to the debate on the 2020 appropriation bill at the House of Representatives. The lawmakers pointed to potential that bound in Nigeria, which when harnessed could provide what's required to fund the budget, especially key areas. The bill, after being put to a vote, passed second reading and was referred to the Committee on Appropriation and Other Standing Committees. In the meantime, Houses adjourned to the 29th of October 2019 to enable committees engage MDAs on budget defence. The House, during plenary, also honoured the winners of the Best Principal and Teacher Award for 2019. We will bring you more details in subsequent bulletins. Building a Nigeria with a viable revenue generation, experts say, is key to achieving the desired growth and actualizing the about 11 trillion Naira 2020 budget. This was the position of guest on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria, which focused on the 2020 appropriation bill. Olushe Adia reports. There is a need to drive revenue uh, you know, for this country. For these guys, uh, on NTA, country, good morning, Nigeria. All key parties uh, will sincerely work years, towards addressing uh, challenges uh, uh, in abating the growth uh, of the country's revenue. They described as necessary the recently have. approved increment of the value added tax, but from 5% to 7.5%, while also welcoming President Muhammadu Bari's initiative in setting up an economic advisory committee. And I'm happy that the economic team uh, so, uh, recently uh, established, has met with the president, and I hope one of the things they will come, about, uh, come out with, in addition to uh, fighting the issues of poverty uh, in Nigeria, uh, should be a lot on how we can generate revenue without putting much um, pain on the populace. The major fault line of this budget will be for us not to understand that any wrong expenditure that is not linked to now being able to now develop what you call demand-driven and result-oriented infrastructure eh, programs and outputs would be pouring water down a long drain. Former Chairman of the Committee on Finance, Babangida Ibrahim, explained that the legislature will keep working harmoniously with the executive towards the realization of the 2020 budget as well as strengthening public private partnership. Involving private partnership. Because if you have infrastructure the key, government alone cannot sustain and provide solution for infrastructure. So by, by engaging the private sector, I think it will go a long way in mitigating 
the challenges we have with infrastructure. The guest commended the early presentation of the 2020 budget and its target of completing existing projects as well as meeting the needs of Nigerians in Abuja, Olusheye, Adiagbo, NTA News. To other matters now, logistics needed for the November 16th governorship election in Kogi State are fully deployed and INEC is good to go. This bold assurance is coming from the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, as he led members of the election management body to inspect non-sensitive materials in the state. Polling units must open at 8 in the morning. And I can see from the arrangements we have made, I'm confident that we'll beat that target. We don't want Nigerians to wait for us. We want officials uh, of the commission to wait for voters to come on election day. We'll keep our eyes on this to ensure that all the ad hoc staff that we engage for the elections are paid fully and promptly. Mayor Ogidi reports that after the inspection, a stakeholders meeting was held where representatives of the 23 political parties and some of their candidates, security agencies and civil society organizations came up with recommendations for a smooth exercise. And still on electoral matters, Nigerian electoral legal framework requires amendment with a view to addressing issues of high number of free and post-election court cases, number of political parties and democratic impunity. These are some of the issues deliberated at the Senate committee meeting with the chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, on preparations for the Bayelsa and Kogi governorship elections. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Aminu reports. Experiences of the 2019 general elections and suggestions on how best to improve the country's electoral processes were also part of the deliberations. The senators seek to know the source of funds for implementation of the two gubernatorial elections in Bayelsa and Kogi states and other elections caused by unprecedented situations which the INEC said they were contained in the 2018 budget. We have also made provision for uh, recall and referendum. And distinguished senators, you may wish to know that yesterday we received a letter uh, from one of the states asking for the register of voters to initiate a recall of one of the members of the National Assembly. Are not senators of APC or PDP, we are senators of the Republic of Nigeria. We need to do our job. So for this election we are conducting in Kogi and Bayelsa, we will survive those elections. We will go before the day of the election, see how prepared you are on the election, and also go on the day of the election too, and observe what you are doing. The INEX says nine out of the 14 activities for the two gubernatorial elections have been accomplished while the Interagency Committee on Election is attending to its security and risk assessments. Meanwhile, Chairman Senate Committee on Tertiary Education and Ted Fund Ahmed Babaketa at an inaugural meeting assured commitment to complement the federal government's effort to address lingering issues bedeviling the country's education sector. We don't have any reason to give Nigerian excuse on some of these issues. The committee members were emphatic on the need for all hands to be on deck in support of President Buhari-led administration to achieve its target of addressing educational challenges facing the country. From the National Assembly, Abdullah Aminu, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Interparty Adversary Council of Nigeria has drawn attention to its reviewed code of conduct, which requires political parties to comply fully with all electoral laws and guidelines on electioneering processes in the country. Timothy Yusuf reports that the council insists that its code of conduct is sacrosanct to ensure free, fair and credible elections, especially in the forthcoming governorship elections in Bayelsa and Kogi states. Political parties, candidates, INEC, civil society and election observer groups, media and the electorate are the key stakeholders directly involved in the forthcoming Bayelsa and Kogi governorship elections, just like other elections conducted in the past in Nigeria. 
The second executive meeting of the ninth National Executive Committee of the Inter-Party Advisory Council of Nigeria harped on educating these critical stakeholders on the need to avoid misinformation, hate speech and all forms of communication which generate discord to circumvent the off-season governorship elections which are fast approaching in Kogi and Bayelsa states. This country belongs to every Nigerian citizen and we must act in a moderate form that the future generation will see that politicians are meant to give direction for good governance and development. A non-governmental organization under the banner of National Peace Campaign in a related development is also canvassing for collaborative efforts to ensure hit free elections. Election is not about violence. Democracy it, as a form of government, depends on the people, the will of the people. And where political violence becomes the order of the day, the people will not be able to exercise their franchise. The group says ambition for development cannot be fueled through thuggery, conflict and campaign of calumny, as all hands must be on deck to pull the nation on a fast track to progress. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf. News. We now join Hingino on standby in Lagos to update us on the suspension of Unilag lecturers. Over to you. Thank you, Hawa, and welcome to Lagos. We begin here with NAPTIP. 20 tax force officials of Agege local government area have been inaugurated into the new information strategies in combating human trafficking created by the National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP. Diana Ajale reports that the move is aimed at strengthening capacity of legal state to fight against trafficking. Ignorance has been identified by experts as one of the reasons why people fall into the trap of human traffickers. In covering the scourge in Nigeria, NAPTIP, in line with the federal government drive to stop illegal migration, has stepped up its public sensitization and empowerment initiative for women and youths. The role of the inaugurated personnel is to identify and expose human trafficking activities within the Lagos metropolis. The fight against human trafficking is not just a fight for the federal government of Nigeria alone. It is a fight that involves or should involve all arms of government, the whole of society. The task given to us, of course, is a Herculean task. But um, this circling task has been made very easy because we have all the connections that we can use in order to tackle the menace of human trafficking. Chairman, Agege Local Government Council, Ganyu Kola Egujombi, was recognized by NAPTIP for championing the fight against human trafficking through a monthly women and youth empowerment program. We design our own program by empowering 20 the residents of Agi, the local government, in whatever they are doing, the youth, the, the youth, the women, and the uh, artisan. 25 people were also empowered with a sum of 100,000 naira cash price each to foster their small scale businesses. In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NCA News. Now, management of the University of Lagos has set up a panel to probe the allegations of sexual harassment involving two lecturers of the university. Our correspondent reports that the two lecturers who are now on suspension have increased the number of lecturers under investigation for sexual harassment. The documentary by the BBC involving four lecturers from the University of Lagos and University of Ghana set the internet as well as the airwaves on fire with various comments. This eventually led to the suspension of the two lecturers of University of Lagos who were captured in the videos, Dr. Boniface Ibenego of the Department of European Languages and Integrated Studies and Dr. Samuel Oladipo of the Department of Economics. We look up to these lecturers to you know, advise us both academically and career-wise and only to be taken advantage of. The university has to do more in terms of curbing, curbing the issue and like trying to find ways, especially checks and balances when it comes to marking of script. Although the management of the institution was not available for comment, a press release issued by the school indicated the university's embarrassment and it 
dissociates itself from the act, saying the school has a policy on sexual harassment and romantic relationships. We condemn in strong, very strong terms unethical practices amongst our members, especially sexual harassment. The school has also ordered the closure of the staff club tagged cold room in the documentary for further investigation, as it noted that the negative way it was captured does not portray the purpose for which the club was created, which is essentially for meetings, seminars, and other official events. The school pledged to do everything possible to curtail such indecent acts. To immigration matters now. Cross-border crimes such as money laundering, human trafficking, smuggling and banditry, as well as irregular migration are national security issues being addressed by the federal government. In furtherance of this, the Nigeria Immigration Service has launched the National Border Management Strategy to address these issues. Datun Oguemi reports that stakeholders are ready to implement the policy and monitor its effectiveness. Presented to the Minister of Interior, Rauf Aregweshala, on the 30th of August this year, the National Border Management Strategy document is anchored on achieving five goals, which are national security, national economic development, promote social harmony, human capital development, and implement an integrated border management concept. Spanning 2019 to 2023, the Nigeria Immigration Service and its development partners are focused on achieving these goals. The action plan, in collaboration with relevant stakeholders, will adopt technology and border management information system across land, sea and air borders. There are implementation plans with a milestone and the measurement will be done through continuous interagency collaboration of members of the stakeholders forum on border management. With assistance from the International Organization for Migration, about 15,000 irregular migrants have returned to Nigeria from 11 countries. The organization expresses its concern for migrant protection, reintegration and return management. Such cooperation will no doubt lead to enhanced coordination on all issues related to effective and efficient management of our borders. The aim being to ensure safe and orderly migration. It is also passports. to provide and an effective and efficient it, border management system across passports. borders in the country. In Lagos, Dotsu, Miami, NTA News. That's our contribution from Lagos. Nationwide continues after the break. Do stay with us. Let's come together as we celebrate the uniqueness of our cultural diversity, showcase our creativity and ingenuity. It's the National Festival for Arts and Culture, NAFEST 2019, in the Asian city of Benin, Edo State, the heartbeat of the nation. Feel our royalty, our pride. Holding 19th through 26th October 2019. Highlights will include drama, children poetry performance, essay writing competition, crafts competition, indigenous cuisine, traditional wrestling, indigenous fabrics in royal apparel, cultural quiz competition, board games, and lots more. Oh yes, it's the National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFEST 2019, Edo State, Nigeria. Holding 19th to 26th October 2019. We are Celebrating our heritage. October Olusha Bunshiwe, Director General, National Council for Arts and Culture, Anosa. Film editing and television production techniques are wonders of the tube that you get with continuous training and retraining. NTA Television College Joss therefore invites film editors and producers in public and private television stations to a special four-week intensive course on film editing and basic television production. Date 14th October to 8th November 2019. Course fee 100,000 Naira per participant. Accommodation inclusive. Venue NTA TV College Rayfield Joss. Take advantage of the course to upgrade your professional skills in film editing and television production. For inquiries, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, JAWS, training you to be the best you want to be. Get ready to be motivated. The Motivated Challenge is back. Bigger, better and bold. 
now featuring 30 contestants from five African countries, all grabbing that multi Guinness B vitamin goodness that fuels your greatness. Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, and Ethiopia. Which country will claim the 20,000 US dollar grand prize? Brought to you by multi Guinness, packed with B vitamins to fuel your greatness. History was made in Africa with the birth of the first television station, WNTV, in Ibadan, Nigeria, on October 31, 1959. I have great pleasure in formally launching Western Nigeria television first in Africa. Television in Africa clocks 60 this year. It's time to celebrate this remarkable achievement. Various activities are lined up. Photo exhibition, a colloquium, public presentation of broadcasting books, and a gala night. Be part of these events powered by Foundation for Ibado Television Anniversary Celebrations, FITAC. <laughs> The ancestors were taken away as slaves. Now they return as kings and queens on a pilgrimage back to the motherland. The third door of return ceremony, the Aspera Festival, Badagri, Lagos, Nigeria, takes place in Badagri from the 15th to the 20th of October 2019. <laughs> Details on participation and sponsorship, contact the following. Website, adore.ng. The African Door of Return Experience. Don't miss it. Brought to you by the African Door of Return Experience Initiative in collaboration with the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission and the African Brandison Foundation. Chief host, the Lagos State Government. Thanks for rejoining us. It's nationwide. In line with President Muhammadu Buhari's approval for the repositioning of the National Broadcasting Commission to operate optimally without political interference and in exercising its duties and sustain its neutrality, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has inaugurated a seven month committee to work out modalities to reform the commission. Anthony Forsen completes the report. Members of the NBC Reforms Committee are Professor Armstrong Idachaba, Chairman, Godfrey Ohuabuwa, Member, J.K. Ehiochenyo, Member, Binta Adamubelu, Member, Ibrahim Jimo, Member, Abu Kinsley, Member, and Joseph Muta, Secretary. Inaugurating the committee, the Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed said members of the committee should see their assignment as a national call to help in sanitizing the broadcast industry coming from the experiences of the 2019 general elections where some broadcast stations whose conduct were found to be unprofessional and unethical. Therefore, the role of this committee is as follows. To implement the recommendations of the committee on the NBC reforms, as approved by the Excellency President Muhammad Bouali, to immediately commence work on all statutory, legal, and regulatory framework for further legislative action on the review of the NBC Act by the National Assembly, to immediately assess and propose equipment, materials, and training needed to make the MBC a modern and well-positioned regulator. To liaise with relevant agencies to ensure the provision of the manpower needs of the commission to enable it to function optimally. To work out the modalities for a competitive and reasonable salaries, wages, and other welfare needs of the staff of the commission to establish necessary protocols for the establishment or appointment of professionals or technocrats to run the agency and appointment into the board of the MBC. To immediately establish and publicize a new sanctioning fines and penalty regime that is in line with international best practices. Promote professionalism, 
and serve as a de deterrent to erring practitioners against misconduct, especially in speech, violence, and spread of fake news. To also liaise with relevant agencies to ensure the provision of manpower needs of the commission, to enable it to operate optimally, as well as work out modalities for a competitive and reasonable welfare, just as it will help to situate the commission in a position that will put an end to all forms of monopoly, which is detrimental to the actualization of the immense potentials of the broadcast industry in Nigeria. Professor Armstrong Idachaba responded on behalf of other members. Honorable Minister, we are very inspired by the terms of reference. Uh, we can see that you are determined not just to make the NBC a modern and a well-equipped uh, regulatory agency. Uh, you are also interested in creating for members of staff of the NBC the right uh, welfare and regulatory environment. The committee has six weeks to conclude its assignment. In Abuja, Anthony Forsen, NTA News. To other matters now, stakeholders of the All Progressives Congress are advocating a stronger synergy among party organs at all levels. The party's non-national working committee members believe this will strengthen governance and decision-making process in the interest of the APC. Saliu Abdullahi reports. APC Non-National Working Committee NEC Members Forum consists of elected National Executive Committee members except the party principal officers at the national level. As stipulated in Article 11 of the 2014 APC Constitution as amended, this forum belongs to the third highest organ of the party. The forum is interested in bridging the gap between party leadership and government why calling on other stakeholders to ensure that vacant positions are filled? Such vacant positions include departmental directors. We salute President Muhammadu Buhari for putting in place his executive cabinet and presentation of the 2020 appropriation bill. This briefing also showcases the newly inaugurated leadership of the forum. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. Stakeholders at the Global Maritime Security Conference have called on the Gulf of Guinea countries and international community to put in place mechanisms that will ensure that resources that are illegally harvested in the region are banned internationally. This was part of the communique presented at the closing ceremony of the Maritime Global Security Conference in Abuja. Let's join Uinaya Kalu Oka for details. The Gulf of Guinea spans several thousand kilometers of coastline and it is key economic resources for the region. Insecurity, however, has been a major challenge affecting its economic potential. For three days, more than 500 delegates from about 80 countries deliberated on ways of tackling the insecurity challenge. We are constantly being threatened by these pirates uh, in the sea. The conference featured deliberation on 11 thematic areas where experts provide solutions on wide spectrum of maritime security. Some of the resolution reached centered on capacity building, maritime security, strategic communications, and maritime law enforcement. Resources that are illegally harvested slash explored in the Gulf of Guinea, including stolen oil and illegal, unreported, and unregulatory fishing, are intentionally banned, as was the case with blood diamonds. To let the international community know that they should also discourage their own uh, people from participating in this kind of illegality. Uh, alone we can go fast, but together we go far away. More security in the future. Declaring the conference closed, Minister of State Transportation, Bemi Sola Saraki said, federal government will set up expert working group who will meet quarterly to follow through with the implementation of the resolution. We hope to convene a follow-up conference in two years to review the resolution and the implementation and further action plans if necessary. The theme for this year's Global Maritime Security Conference is Managing and Securing Our Waters. Oyinne Akaloka, NTA News. 
Still on security, the Nigerian army, in conjunction with the civilian joint tax force, has arrested 10 suspected members of the Boko Haram terrorist group in Polka, Borno State. A statement by the acting director, Army Public Relations, Colonel Segir Musa, indicates that one of the suspects has been on serial number 89 on the wanted list of the Nigerian army. The arrests were made during a clearance operation. And the media has been urged to give prominence to the successful degrading of the Boko Haram insurgency by the Buhari administration rather than focus on isolated antics of the fleeing terrorists. Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, George Akome, who studied these in Abuja while receiving the management of the TV Continental, a media outfit, says it is the responsibility of the media to partner with the federal government in its quest to rid the country of all remnants of terrorist activities. It is credit to this government that a lot has been done in that area to stand this tiger in security. A lot of damage has been done to Boko Haram. They can never ever operate with food. What the military is doing now is a mopping up operation. And that is why we want to appeal to you to try as much as possible to be objective in reporting. We're all on the same page and we all have the same goals and that is to succeed and to make Nigeria a great place. And the House Committee on Army has resolved to give the Nigerian Army the necessary legislative support to tackle insurgency and other criminalities in the country. Chairman of the committee, Abdul Razak Namdas, gave these assurance at the inaugural meeting. He said, given the security challenges facing the nation and the role of the army, the committee will embark on its oversight of army formations across the nation to identify their challenges and give the necessary support to address them. He urged members of the committee to take this responsibility as a call to serve the nation, while reminding the Nigerian army of the need to synergize with other security agencies to achieve success. Getting emphasis, and it bears the brunt of the nation's security challenges. So we have a huge responsibility placed on our shoulders as a committee. We are all aware of the security challenges the nation has faced in the last few years, which is a source of concern to all of us. They require our utmost attention. I therefore implore you to consider this onerous assignment as a call to national service. Members of the committee promised to bring their knowledge and experience to bear in the interest of the nation. The committee was inaugurated on October the 2nd. And still staying with security matters, the Defence Headquarters has commenced the process of verifying veteran associations of the nation's armed forces. The Chief of Defence Staff, General Abayomi Oloni Shakin, reveals that this is necessary for effective communication and welfare delivery to the veterans. Defence correspondent Ismail Musa reports. The proposed unification of the 14 existing veteran associations comprising retired members of the Army, Navy and the Air Force, the Defense Headquarters notes, will enhance the utilization of the potentials of members and improve provision of welfare packages by the federal government. Such synergy could be channeled towards improved engagement of veterans in matters germane to national development security and welfare of members of the association. The CDS had also directed the review and presentation of the Nigerian Legion Act, number 37 of 1988. It is humbly prayed that the Ninth National Assembly will, as part of its contribution towards the unification efforts, amend the reviewed Nigerian Legion Act 1988, the Veterans Federation of Nigeria Act. In another event, the United Kingdom Defense Attaché to Nigeria was at the Nigerian Army Headquarters Abuja to seek ways to collaborate and enhance synergy 
between the militaries of the two nations. How can we help Nigeria meet some of the key challenges that you face going forward? Um, and really that's the sort of key purpose of the mission. About 700 British military training team, BMAT, have been engaged in the training of members of the Nigerian Armed Forces since 2015. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. And following the reported case of another kidnap of a school principal and six students, the Kaduna State Police Command says it is aware of the location of the abducted and gravest college students and making efforts to ensure they are released and hurt. Achari Maxwell has their story. Engravers College Kaduna has been in pensive mood following the abduction of six female students and two of their teachers by unknown gunmen. As a result of this uneasy calm, Kaduna State Police Command is making efforts to ensure their release. Negotiation is still going on with the uh, kidnappers. We know their location, but uh, we don't want to endanger the life of the victims. On its part, Kaduna State Government says it is working tirelessly to secure the state. We will continue to partner with the police and other security agencies. And I believe that the media too has a role to play. Meanwhile, Kaduna State Police Command has paraded 45 suspected criminal elements, including kidnappers of three students of Amadou Bello University area and a lawmaker in the Kaduna State House of Assembly. In Kaduna, Achari Maxwell, NTA News. Now, every second Thursday in the month of October is set aside by the United Nations as the World Sight Day to raise awareness about prevention of blindness and other visual impairments. As Nigeria joins the international community to mark the day, health correspondent Hakimat Aliu brings us the statistics of the Nigerian situation and how to better improve eye care. In a global data on visual impairment by the World Health Organization, approximately 285 million people worldwide live with low vision and blindness, among which 39 million people are blind, while 246 million have severe visual impairment. There is also an estimate of 19 million children who are visually impaired and an increase in the elderly population. With this trend, Dr. Anjezi Chinedu, an optometrist, says the significance of world sight today cannot be overemphasized. So there are a lot of blinding eye conditions. However, with world sight day, our focus usually is to create awareness on preventing avoidable blindness. Why is it avoidable blindness? For instance, if a child has refractive error, we encourage that child or the parents of that child to recognize this and take the child to an eye clinic where the optometrist will screen and probably give the best corrective um, glasses for this child. Dr. Chinedu highlighting the leading causes of blindness and visual impairment to include uncorrected refractive errors. Cataract, amongst others, noted that people need to pay attention to their eyes as it is their window to the world. I do go for eye checkup and it's good for one to go and know the condition of the eyes because the eyes is very important. I went for an eye examination last in 2007. The last time I went for an eye examination was um, 2006 there about. And then, but I know it's, it's, it's said to always check our eyes regularly. It is a call to action to ensure people get access to eye care. Hakimat Ali, NTA News. And for more on the World Site Day and other reports, let's join Suleiman on standby in our Kaduna Network Center. Good afternoon to you. Thank you, Hawa, and welcome to Kaduna. Nigeria is said to have made remarkable strides in combating preventable eye diseases that lead to visual impairment or total blindness. This ophthalmologist at a gathering in Kaduna to mark the World Sight Day says was as a result of the commitment of the country to the conditions spelled out by the World Health Organization to end cases of preventable blindness by the year 2020. Abdullahi Mohammed has the details. Ame Adole undergoes eye examination in preparation for a second surgery to his eye. He suffers from cataract, 
a preventable eye disease that could have rendered him blind. See this one, maybe see well again. When the game will be now, I begin to complain to her. He is not alone. A survey has it that about 4.25 million adults in Nigeria are suffering from different kinds of visual impairment. These number, medical experts say, could have been significantly minimized if the habit of periodic eye examinations is inculcated. That explains why Professor Abe Emmanuel Rafael, a specialist ophthalmologist, put forward the need to make it mandatory for foundation schools across Nigeria to conduct periodic eye examination on school children. By examining their eyes, conducting vision tests, it is possible, it is easy to isolate those who have various types of um, eye diseases. It's cataract. It's still the commonest cause of blindness in Nigeria and worldwide. Though cataract and glaucoma top the least of the causes of blindness, eye care specialists say visual impairment resulting from diabetes and high blood pressure are presenting a new challenge in Nigeria. The eye is the most important sense organ in the human body. Skin is the outer covering of the body and it protects the body. There was a debate as to whether the eye is the most important organ of the body. The debate was hot. But who knows that better than these patients here who are suffering from one element or the other that relates to the eye? In Kaduna, Abdullah Muhammad, NT News. Thank you, Abdullah. The current efforts to improve or rise production value chain in the country has received another boost with the signing of agreement between Jigao State Government and Hunan Province in the Republic of China. Ibrahim Belogunda tells us more from Guzi. Jigawa State is blessed with abundant cultivable land conducive for the implementation of federal government rice production initiative. This agreement attracted by Governor Muhammad Bader Abubakar will involve the cultivation of hybrid rice, agricultural research, and introduction of mechanized farming to Jigawa rice farmers. This is very important for the country, looking at our present uh, yield per hectare. The hybrid rice that we are trying to produce in Jigawa was, was is doing between 7 to 16 tons per hectare in land rubbish. The project to run for five years is expected to be extended to sesame seed cultivation as well. From Duzi, Ibrahim Bellogunda, NTA News. Federal government has taken practical steps to help farmers in Kano State to overcome tomatoes lot through Anko Borrower Scheme. The major is to halt importation of its pests. Mohamed Rabio Ali reports that the federal government is concerned about lack of modern methods of tomatoes preservation among farmers. This report is presented from our studio. Nigeria is holding signposts of progress in tomato production, which places the country as the second largest producer of fresh tomato in Africa, with production capacity of 1.8 million tons, representing 10.8% in the region and 14th in the globe with 2.3 million tons. Despite these enormous potentials, the country continues to rely on importation of tomato pest to meet its domestic demand. Tomato farmers in Kano have been making effort to reverse the trend, but continue to suffer setbacks on account of subsistence nature of tomato farming and poor preservation methods. These constraints prompted the federal government to support tomato farmers through Anko Borrower Scheme. The arrangement is government will assist farmers to bridge the post harvest loss being experienced. This time around, under this project, 300,000 or 500,000 pieces of plastic crates is going to come into this project. You, too, you know that uh, it will reduce the post harvest loss to the minimum. Experts are of the opinion that by the year 2023, the country will be exporting tomato to other African countries with the support of present administration. So in Nigeria, we have all the potentials and we have no business importing any food item in this country. The aggressive campaign embarked upon by the federal government to encourage farmers to scale up tomato farming aims at halting import and be self-sufficient in tomato production. And that does it from Kaduna. It's back to you, Hawa, for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Many thanks to you, Suleiman, and our report just in size, 
President Mohamed Buhari has promised to beam his administration's such light on the high cost of governance in a deliberate effort to weed out all vestiges of corruption and other stake obstacles to national development. Receiving in audience the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, the President asked the members to come out with a more comprehensive plan of action towards totally eliminating the menace in the nation's body polity for consideration. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari this Thursday granted audience to former President Goodluck Abele Jonathan, State House Correspondent Adamu Sambu, has the details. The former Nigerian leader, President Guluk Ebele Jonathan, who arrived at the State House at five minutes past three Thursday afternoon, was given a warm welcome by President Muhammad Buhari. <laughs> President Buhari and his guest then retreated for talks behind closed doors. Details of their discussions, which lasted about ten minutes, were not made public. Efforts made by journalists to hear from the former Nigerian leader were unsuccessful. This is the second formal engagement between President Muhammad Buhari and former President Gulag Ebele Jonathan since coming to power in 2015. The first was on the 3rd of August 2016. Former President Gulag Jonathan, however, attended the National Council of State meeting once under the Buhari presidency. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Possibilities have been explored by the Nasser state government to develop a local rail transport system between the Kefi Abuja access so as to provide an alternative to hundreds of commuters to ease pressure on the road. Abubakar Usman Akwanga brings the details. The partnership, according to Mr. Sargo Grubanov of Transmash Holding, is to reduce travel time and create alternative transport routes. He says the firm specializes in different areas the state will find viable for its industrialization policy and pledged commitment to sustain synergy. And uh, we are happy to have this opportunity to meet you now as we see it as a perfect timing for the upcoming events to be able to closely cooperate with your state on different projects and the ones that we have been discussing already. Governor Abdullah Suley appreciates the initiative, which he explains will further entrench the administration's blueprint on economic development of the state. This relationship is going to be a three-legged uh, relationship. The state government, the federal government, and your company. And we are going to meet with the minister. I will hear what he discussed with you. And then we will open this discussion from there. He says the state is ready to collaborate genuine investors with consign to create effective platforms for economic prosperity of the state. In Lafia, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. And Kemi in Ibadan is next on our lineup. Good afternoon to you, Kemi. Good afternoon, Hawa, and welcome to Ibadan. The Quara State Task Force on Immunization and Primary Healthcare has been inaugurated with a mandate to stamp out polio and strengthen access to primary health care in the state. The committee was inaugurated by the state governor, Abdurrahman Abdurrazak. Raliat Ibrahim has details. Three years ago, Nigeria joined the League of Nations that had been declared polio-free until there was a resurgence of polio in Kwara State early this year. This task force is therefore mandated to provide political support while mobilizing necessary resources for the implementation of both routine and supplemental immunization activities in the state. The presence of active task force on immunization is a prerequisite for, for quality polio campaign and routine immunization, immunization service. The role of the task force, amongst others, is to coordinate, supervise all good eradication initiatives and activities, in particular, primary health care in general, in line with recommendations from the state technical team. All the members of the task force are Chairman House Committee on Health, representative of the Ministry of Health, as well as representatives of various health and advocacy agencies. Raliat Ibrahim. NTA News. 
Journalists have been admonished to use the media to foster harmonious relationship among Nigerians and project the image of the country positively at all times. Veteran journalists said these at a forum in Iwo, Ocean State. Correspondent Shola Wahid brings us details. The media are communication channels through which news, entertainment, education, data or promotional messages are decimated. It includes every broadcasting and narrow casting medium such as newspapers, magazines, televisions, radios, internet, billboards, among others. Users of the media are urged to always avoid content such as each speech and fake news that could trigger violence and cause loss of lives and destruction of properties. For this country to be well secured and for it to, be, to develop, we need to manage our process of communication. We must talk to ourselves and we must give voices to the Nigerian people. Good media in all the processes identify the cause, identify the source, propagating um, the roadmap for enhancing security. There are ways of using language to ensure that it builds the society instead of destroying it. You're still watching Nationwide. More reports after this time out. Stay with us. NCA Abelkuta is 40. Come, let's celebrate 40 years of impressive TV broadcasting at the grassroots. On Thursday, 17th October 2019, there'll be a lecture titled Lens and Sound Television, a tool for social reorientation and good governance. Guest lecturer, Professor Oluyemisi Oluremi Obiladi, Professor of Education and Women's Studies, Obafemi Awolo University. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, Prince Dakwa Abiodun, Governor of Ogun State, Royal Father of the Day, His Royal Majesty, Oba Adedotunare Mubadebo, the Alake and Pramontrola of Egbaland, Chairman of the Occasion, Chief Olatunde Anyela Abudu, Mayego of Egbaland, Chief Host, Malam Yakubo Ibn Mohammed, Director General, NCA. Other activities lined up for the occasion include an array of awards to distinguished entities held to walk on Saturday, 12th October 2019, while Innovative Match comes up on Tuesday, 15th October 2019 at MKO Abiola Stadium. Come, celebrate 40 years of impressive television at the grassroots with us and take NCA Abelko to the next level. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Of course I did. That is village El Master tune. Eh? So Auntie Amebo was not gossiping then? Village El Master is celebrating 50 years. 50? Already? Wait, oh, you mean people have been watching Village El Master since 1968? I care how time flies. I have retired, but not tired. And I'm 50 years now. So because of that, we won't get big party. New dates now 28th to 29th October 2019. Now, me, I'm a body invite you now, and my belly just is sweet because I don't say all oh, those people they drink my party, then go come, come drink it to boy again. Now, me, oh, radio jam, me, go, they call you now, they could not forget it. innovations and creativity in the science and arts categories. Theme, promoting unity and innovations in youths as agents of change through science and arts. Venue, NTA Headquarters Arena, Area 11, Garki, Abuja. Date, Sunday, October 20th to Thursday, October 24th, 2019. For more information, please call the following numbers. Proudly supported by NTA ETV promoting learning.
has succeeded to pull a galaxy of stars from the north, south, east to the west, and central Africa. And also those that are domiciled beyond the shores of Africa, under one roof. Thanks for rejoining us on Sports is Next with Tamara Ebiwe. Nigeria's Golden Eaglets have settled down in their training camp in Brazil ahead of this year's FIFA.